Let's look at multiple instrument recording and aliases. Let's start with recording multiple instruments at once. So I have three software instruments loaded up, and if they're playing the same line, I don't have to record one and then copy and paste the region to the other channels. I can simply arm record all of them. And remember, this is logic, so I can click and drag, and use will and record all three, or as many as you have, at the same time. Now that is called layer recording. And you can of course adjust the volume, panning, etc. Let's do that now. And I can just simply hit record. Similarly, you can also do layer recording with a combination of software and audio tracks. So whatever is armed, and you have chosen an input source, it will record either MIDI information or audio. Now, another thing that I want us to look at is working with an alias. An alias is a reference to one of the regions. We use them to send them to other channels instead of copying the MIDI data, and also copy them to other parts of the same channel. Now they play back exactly what the original or parent region plays. Let's create one and see how it works. The way it works is that you select the region. Actually, let's make a new track. Let's load a different instrument. Let's load a, a clav. Don't like that one. I like that one. So, the way it works is, we select the region that we want to create an alias for. So, let's go with the Stanway Grand Piano. And then we select the, the channel that we want. So, let's send it to the new one. And then we place the playhead to the spot where we want it. So, let's say that I want an alias at bar 14. So, I'm going to place it there. And then I'm going to Functions, Region Alias, and then Make Alias and that creates a new alias. Or, the way I do it, and it's really, really easy, is by using the shortcut. Do you remember the shortcut for copying something? It's Option and Drag. To do an alias, you just have to add Shift. So Shift, Option, and Drag. And that creates an alias. The new region will play back exactly what the parent region plays. And you know what the parent region is, because you get some information on it on italics. So for this one, for example, it says Steinway Grand Piano, track 1 and bar 11. Now you might be thinking, what is the point? I can always copy and paste the region. Why use an alias? Here's the best use for it. So let's say that you have a region that repeats four times. So let's say I've got this one at the track, and it repeats four times. Now, this will play back exactly what I have. Now, later in the song, for example, I might make some changes to this part of the song. Now, I will have to this region. Now, I'll have to go back, delete this one, and then recopy and repaste that region again. With an alias, I don't have to do that. I can simply create an alias and then copy that. And whatever change I make to the original one, then this will be applied to the aliases as well. And if you're really, really picky, you might ask, okay, then why can't I just simply loop my region? Well, a looped region will have to be connected. An alias can be placed anywhere, even in between regions. Now, if you try to edit an alias, let's put that back, you get this message. It will ask you if you want to edit the original uh, region or create a copy of it. If I click on real copy, it will create a new region that is identical to the original one, but is independent. There it is. So let's go back. Another way of making the alias a real copy is by selecting it and then by going to functions menu and then region alias and then convert alias to a copy. Let's command Z that, 
And another handy thing is the reassigning of an alias. Let's say that you want to try another part on a specific section, and you don't have you don't have to create a new alias and paste it there. You can simply select the alias that you want and the new region that you want. So for example, let's say that I want this one uh, to be with the retro vibes. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to hold shift and select the retro vibes and then go to functions and then go to reassign. And as you can see, it now the information here changed as well. Now let's say that you have a huge project and it will take you a bit to find the original region just by reading the information on the alias. You can find the original region by clicking on the alias. Let's say that I want that one. So I select that one and then I go to functions, region alias, and then select original region. And the original one will be selected. Now let's go back to the menu. So underneath that, the select aliases of region will select all the aliases that belong to that specific region. And lastly, if you want to delete the original region, then you will get this dialog box. So let's delete that. If you click on convert, it will make all the aliases that belong to that region a real copy and then delete the original region. Let's try it. Let's command Z, let's delete it again. And if you click on keep, it will just delete the original region and keep the aliases as they are. You will see now that the aliases have a new text. It says orphan alias. That means that they have no source region. There are two things you can do with this. So you can go back to the menu region alias and either delete all of them or select them and then simply reassign them to a new region the way I showed you earlier. That's it. They're very convenient. They make your life much easier. Start using them.